Welcome. My name is Daryl Miller, and I'm here with Gareth Jones. Hey, thanks for having me, Daryl. It's great to have you here. Today, we're going to talk about the Microsoft Graph Education API. So tell us about the Education API, Gareth. Well, great question. Well, there's lots of amazing education apps out there. Uh, imagine a teacher going to a conference, getting excited about a bunch of applications, and they get back to their classroom, all you know, busting to have a go with them. And then when they get started, the first thing they've got to do is go and usually get the names of all of their students in all of the classes they teach loaded up into the applications. And that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. No, no, it can be it can be kind of a barrier to entry, uh, especially if you think about that multiplied by all of the classes that a teacher's teaching. Yeah. Um, so how does the graph help with that? Well, most of that information lives in the back-end systems that the school uses to to um, to run their applica their um, their actual um, work that the school does. So they've got an application that has all of the classes, all of the teachers teaching those classes, and which students are in which classes. Yeah. And and so then, how do they then get that information over into the graph? So. Um, that uh, those systems are very diverse. So we've got a, an application that's part of Office 365. If you're an education customer of Microsoft, it's called Microsoft School Data Sync. And Microsoft School Data Sync makes the connections through to that very diverse set of uh, school information system applications and loads all that data into the graph, regardless of which system you're using. So it's all just there ready for you to consume. OK, so, so now it's in the graph. How do, I, how do I now get at it in the graph? OK, well, let's, uh, let's show you. We've got some, uh, some education APIs in the graph with an education node. So um, if you look here, we've got an education slash me node. So I can go and see the things that are relevant to me in education. And uh, we'll take a look at the classes. So the first thing you might want to do when you're bringing up an education API is have a picker for the teacher to go and select the class that they're currently teaching. So that right. would be me classes here. So if I go and run this, you'll see I'm signed in into an education tenant. And then I'll go and scroll down and uh, have a look at the list of classes that me. So I'm logged in as a teacher account here. And you can see that I've got a bunch of records coming back talking about a, uh, the set of classes. I'm a maths teacher here, so I've got a bunch of maths classes coming back. And just a, a very simple JSON showing me the, uh, the descriptions of the classes, codes for the classes, and what term I'm teaching each class in, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's the first thing I typically do. So then I take the ID of one of those classes. So I'm just going to go. Oops, copy paste the uh, uh, one of these IDs, and um, and then go and paste that in um, to the uh, to the classes uh, API under education. So I'm going to do education slash classes, and then paste in that ID, and then choose the members of the class, and run that. All right. So now what I've done is I've said, hey, go and find me the classes. Uh, sorry, the individual class that I picked, and tell me all the members in it. So this is going to give me myself as the teacher, because it was my class, and okay. then all of the students that are in the class. So you can see straight away I'm at the top there as the teacher with the primary role, teacher, so I can pick out who is the teacher. And there might be co-teachers or assistant teachers or something like that. And then as I scroll down, then uh, you'll see that um, what I've got here is some students as well. So here we've got uh, somebody whose primary role is student, and there's going you know, to be about you know typically thirty students in the class here. I've got a, a bunch here, um, and I can go and build a um, an experience for all of those students coming in. And we can be relying on the fact that this is just always up to date because there's this background sync process syncing with whatever is the school's back end system. That's exactly right. Yes. So Excellent. they'll typically upload it overnight, something like that. So it'll always be up to date. So. Uh, with all this information in the graph, what, what else might we be able to do with uh, the Graph API? Well, there's a couple of new things we've got coming up uh, that we've uh, just released previews of. One of the requests that we very frequently get from partners is that they would like to be able to communicate with parents of their students. So for example, you know, we all have got that experience of getting a whole lot of paper slips home for permission slips, I'm sure. Well, no, they usually don't come home for me. And then we find out five days later that they should have come home. That's but, right. But they're just lost in the bottom of a backpack, right? Yes, so yes. those kind of things. It's great to automate those and make, start to make those electronic going forward. So having that information on the graph, uh, we've added uh, a set of contacts to each student. So you can go and say the contacts for parents or guardians or maybe a carer for a student to be able to go in and reach those. So we've just added that. Um, and you can go and get that with related contacts under each student. 
And then another thing um, that uh, that you may want to do, if, if we've talked about this interactive scenario where you just uh, go and pick from uh, users and the, the classes that they're working with, but you may have an application that really has a database entirely of its own, full of students and teachers, and you need to synchronize that with the, mm -hmm. that backend student information system. So to do that, you don't really want to have to go and pull the entirety of the data every day that would be inefficient and do your own comparing so what we've done is we've provided a delta api on all of those collections students teachers schools classes to just so get the changes to right. just get the changes exactly so let's okay. have a look at that so we're going to, i'm going to use postman because we want to use an app only token okay. to go and pull that because typically what we'd be doing is building some kind of back-end daemon application that was running uh to go and and, and pull that information it wouldn't be a, a, an upfront application that was interactive. Right, and currently you can't do app-only requests using Graph Explorer. No, that would be a great thing to, to ask for in user voice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it absolutely would. And yeah, it awesome. is on the roadmap, so we're working on it. Excellent, cool. I'll look forward to that. So here is Postman. So you can see I'm making a call here to education classes, and now I've put Delta on the end. So it's as simple as that, really, and you can do that on any of those collections that I talked about. So I'm going to hit Send and bring back a packet. And you can see here, I've got a next link. So I can go and, um, and then under my next link, I've got a uh, collection of all the classes that have changed since I last made the call. If I scroll down again a little bit, there you go. So those are the other classes that have changed. So I can right. sit there and uh, repeatedly call that next link to page through all of the classes that have changed since I last made the call. And then once I've got to the end of the set of pages, I'll get uh, a delta link instead of the next link. And that'll tell me, hey, this is something that you can, uh, you've got to the end of the, the current set of changes. This is a URL you can go and call in the future right. to see if there are any more changes. And then you'll get another set of pages. So it's really simple to uh, to synchronize your database with whatever the uh, back end system is, which you don't need to know at all via the magic of the Microsoft Graph as a kind of intermediary. Right. And, and therefore, you can build all kinds of cool apps without having to re-enter all that data that's coming from that back end. Well, thank you very much for coming and showing us this today. Uh, if people want to find out more about the Education APIs, where would they go? They'd just go to the graph.microsoft.com homepage, and they'll find an Education node in the table of contents with our overview. And they can look through all the scenarios and then drill into the references for the Education APIs there alongside all the other Graph docs. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.